found a meteor empowering but but in the first instance um the trauma vortex i know somebody who called it a trauma vortex this kind of swirling like spiraling mess of everyone's sadness that was coming up with me too i found it really exhausting um but i think because it was it was tiring to wake up to the scale of the struggle like it was one one thing to know kind of academically that this was happening to women all over the world it's another thing to understand my own personal experience and the experience of my friends but it's like a bit like when you um read about a war or a famine in a foreign country like it's one thing to read about it, it's another thing to be there mm. and seeing me too as it arose was like being there you were inside whether you're inside your own echo chamber or inside someone else's echo chamber like e every echo was saying the same thing me too and that was really really tiring and forced me to really and I think not forced but like pushed me and I think many women to actually start facing some of this stuff in a practical way like for example um this historical abuse um charge that I have now with the police against this GP like that's something that happened when I was 17 years old and I'm 32 and it had always been there and had always been some unpleasant thing but it was only with me too and with the scale of the problem that I saw my responsibilities it was like I have one, one thing is protecting myself. And another thing, if I'm going to be a citizen of any world I want to be part of, is also protecting other people. And I now feel moved to um, do something about what is what has been happening, much more so than I think just simply stuff like, um, like pay gaps and gender inequality did. Like Once I saw how many women were suffering, there was no way I could just carry on trying to mitigate my own and how about you I wonder how has me too changed your life mm. <clears throat> it's brought up um the immediate thing it's brought up is a sense of um hyper awareness about my past mm -hmm. and I think the first thing it does is um m m calls into question any sexual encounter I've had with anyone from, mm -hmm. from being a teenager to now mm -hmm. and wondering did I cross a line did I ask for consent um mm -hmm. and noticing the huge part of me that didn't even want to go into that inquiry lest something be revealed that was deeply shameful mm -hmm. um and then it, it was also interesting that when it happened there was almost a turning away of it I remember I remember seeing it and then not facing it in, in the way that it was cascading down the newsfeed. Mm -hmm. um, and, but ultimately feeling this sense of uh, like the realness of it, the example of like actually being in a war or being in a famine and mm -hmm. seeing like, oh shit, this is like mm -hmm. my friend Sarah, this is um, my partner mm -hmm. and this is... Mm -hmm women who are like it's interesting i find it really difficult to talk about it because i'm i'm, I'm noticing the um the uh this like i, sh I should be displaying this almost mm. kind of valorizing male behavior that mm. when i saw it i like immediately felt the the pain of mm. like my sisters and mm. uh and i saw the error of my ways but it was it was almost in 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 reality the truth was it was a kind of a very disorientating mm -hmm. experience that a lot of me just didn't want to look at and kind of didn't want to associate mm -hmm. with and i would say that's still present mm -hmm. i think i don't think actually if i'm being really honest mm -hmm. i have like had enough conversations with men about mm -hmm. can we create a space to talk about potentially where there have been transgressions where mm -hmm. we haven't probably negotiated mm -hmm. consent can we deal with the shame of that do we have the courage to speak to previous partners about even just to inquire whether that was a possibility to give that space to talk about it mm -hmm. um obviously not wanting to put the kind of emotional labor on someone else and go you know did, did something happen but so yeah it um i suppose uh, detach detached numbness could be a way of describing mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. uh, and and as i say that now a feeling of shame that like it wasn't something other than that mm -hmm. um and I think I think that's just the thing that has like touched me the most is conversations with my partner about 
previous experiences um, in which, um, yeah, she experienced, you know, th that kind of mild form of sexual harassment that has that kind of went undiagnosed until mm -hmm. this point. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the, like the bitter pain that causes mm -hmm. and the lack of trust that causes and the violation that causes yeah. and this feeling of like, fuck, mm -hmm. you know, like yeah. what, like what do you, you know, you want to extend a hand and just say like I'm sorry mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. um and it really and it really puts it into perspective because mm -hmm. it's interesting that one of the things I wanted to talk to you about was this feeling of amongst men of feeling ashamed to be men for mm -hmm. feeling that like all men and all masculinity is toxic mm -hmm. um, at a time when there's also like huge insecurities and problems being a man in society mm -hmm. but it's the reality of lived experience mm -hmm. you know it's the it's the stories underneath the facts about how many women are domestically abused mm -hmm. or how mm -hmm. many women experience everyday sexism mm -hmm. to the actual pain of having to go through a court process mm -hmm. having to face a former lover and say you raped me mm -hmm. that it's that well of pain that really uh triggers some kind of shift mm -hmm. that might describe as feminist mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and and really um yeah there's a calling in that mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. <laughs> um it, yeah it's funny actually as you were talking thank you for answering that because as you were um talking i realized i haven't asked many men directly like what's me too done to you mm. it's like there's this um there is a i guess i've been working with uh assumption Assumption's not the right word. It's like almost like an unstated demand that um, like men will face this, reckon with it, empathize with me, do something, you know? Mm. And I haven't I, and that I haven't thought about saying, actually, how did this make you feel? Because it's been like, I'm not I don't care how you feel, you're supposed to be on my side now, you need to help me fight this, you know. Mm. And that actually, like, it's something I've been thinking a lot about that um the sort of um how to how to discharge the rage that women have of their, for their own experiences at the hands of men who have hurt them and also the rage they have at the kind of like global prevalence of that you know there's kind of the individual and then there's like oh my god that this is happening I guess like the way that you have like maybe individually you might suffer from flooding because of climate change in your house but you also have like a global rage at like the of, of because of climate change but then also like what to do um like how to bring not just bring the men to a place of understanding but to how to heal their shame and guilt for having persisted in a system that they were just born into you know mm. and the um and then that that work it's too much to expect any i think it's too much to expect any anyone to do all that by themselves they need everyone needs their community to support them through any healing process and as much as the I think that women need, or whoever has suffered from the, from patriarchy needs needs everyone to witness that and bring them to a place of healing. Also, um, whoever has benefited from patriarchy also needs to like be supported in order to be able to um, reckon with that, you know, reckon with that huge um, like guilt and burden, the burden of that guilt, and to then come to a place where it's it's actually reasonable to expect some sort of um, like, um, what's the word, like remorse, you know? Like, because just demanding men to be sorry, you should be sorry, you know, is not actually reasonable. It's like, it's very, um, it's not, I think it's a reasonable, it's like as an emotion to have, you can, you can understand it, but there's like some steps in between like people holding this power and then them being sorry for holding that power that needs to be worked through together, 